so we really ought to rock. Okay, let us sing the song, right? Come on, let's go for it. Y'all gotta, we gotta find some energy. Come on. forever be fruitful indeed. I am the way, the truth and the life. No one gets to the Father except that he comes through me. Yeah. So let not mercy, let not mercy and truth say for say
good morning, Dream Bar. We're so thankful that you are here with us today. Just a couple quick announcements. Tonight, we will be starting our uh, Sunday evening service at 5. You don't want to miss it, so please bring your friends and your family. Also, February 8th, the Joy Group will be having their Valentine's dinner at Chop the River. Who doesn't love that? So please come. Also, February 20th, Daniel Wilson will be here about outreach. And then the following day, we will be starting our outreach teams. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be a great opportunity to be in the community and to fellowship with others. So we hope that you have a great day of worship. We can't wait to worship with you. Bye, y'all. All right, y'all, let's stand and worship a little bit. <laughs> this, uh, this morning's a good morning in the house, amen. Just full of God's people. Man, we got it full up in here today. Um, that's phenomenal. We, uh, we have this verse that we've, uh, we've heard many times before probably, but here's what it said. But he said, the things, this is Luke 18, 27, the things that are impossible with people are possible with God, amen? So the things that so many times we try to accomplish our own power, the things that we try to in the flesh make happen just if we grit our teeth hard enough we just focus hard enough a lot of times those things just feel like the hamster wheel amen like it's not really getting anywhere but with god all things are possible amen, amen. Uh, you know in scripture this morning and the way i found that was i just googled bible verses on anything is possible i'm just fired up because this song we're doing is called anything is possible and it is crazy how many verses there are that say anything is possible with God. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that reassuring? And, uh, you know, if, if you're like me, the kid in me is like, that means I can just jump and fly, right? I can just do anything. I'm a superhero. But really it means that God equips us to do whatever task he calls us to. I mean, if his spirit is inside of me, I'm not full of fear. I'm not scared to do things. I'm not, I don't have the spirit of timidity in me. Spirit of power though, amen. So we'll pray. We're gonna worship today. It's so good in the house of God. God, thank you so much for getting us here. God, just those those typical mercies and graces we take for uh, for granted, God. Just be in here, God, traveling to this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that we're here, God. Thank you for the body. God, thank you for people just ready to worship. God, I can tell that that in this house. It ain't about nobody but you. God, we're ready to lift our hands, to praise our Father. God, you're so good. God, and God, let us keep having this gratitude that we share, God. It's in your word, it says, abstain from all these things and instead, thanksgiving. It's the key to everything. It's the key to flee from sin. It's the key to, God, being full in our spirit. Being full. Lord, we love you. We pray that today is just an awesome day in your house, God, and that we just keep on with this spirit, God, of believing that anything is possible with you. In your holy name, in your powerful name, amen. And there is no shadow that has ever overcome your light. And there is no rival I could ever stand against your mind. You've always been with us. Every battle, every battle, you've already won. You've already
real quick, y'all. Let me restart the computer real quick. That should fix our problem. Ah, man. Y'all glad he's overcome, church. But y'all glad he holds the victor's crown.
seated. We come to the time uh, in our morning worship service uh, where we get to just pray over this service and, and pray, you know, just seeking God uh, just to come and, and show out in the service this morning. And uh, when I was looking through and when I was asked, I, I looked at Psalms 100, and it's a very familiar verse. Um, it says, Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful singing. Know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting. And his faithfulness to all generations. I mean, we serve a living God who has just poured out blessings upon blessings upon us. Um, we've had people who've experienced it firsthand. And when you see God working, it's just amazing that we get to join in there and be right alongside him. And this morning, as you probably noticed, we've got the Tanzania flag um, behind us. And this is a cool thing that Miss Diane started um, a year or two ago just to let us know that, hey, we've got missionaries that are getting ready to go out from here into the field to put boots on the ground, to, uh, to show the love, to tell the love of Jesus. And this morning, uh, we're going to commission to, to pray and send out our pastor. Um, you can come on forward. Brother Billy Wayne Morris and Brother Adam Montgomery, they're going to be leaving today. As soon as church is over, we're taking them to Atlanta to get ready to go into the field. And I don't know about you, church, but it blesses my heart to have a pastor and a father that when it says, whom shall I send and who will I go? And he answered that call, here I am, send me. You know, he's been a leader for all of us to follow. And it's amazing to have a man of God here that is not only doing the work here in our Jerusalem, but all the way to the ends of the earth. And this week, um, in the next 10, 11 days, I just ask that as a church family, that we pray for these three men behind us, that we lift them up because we are not over in Tanzania, but our work here is not done. That prayer is going to be the work. That prayer when things get tough, when the fatigue hits, the tiredness hits, that we're lifting them up, holding them up before a holy God that is going to be with them to give them the strength that they need, to give them the words that they need to say. And so I just ask as a church now, if you would commit to pray, if y'all would just stand up and in unison, just lift your hands out to them and we're going to pray. I'm going to read one more scripture. Um, it says in Romans 10, uh, 14 and 15, it says, How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how will they believe in him who they, whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? How will they preach unless they are sent? Just as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news of good things. And that's what these guys are doing this week. And so we're just going to pray. And uh, we're going to be lifting y'all up in prayer throughout these next couple weeks that y'all are out. And we're going to be here right there with you. We're not over in Ashton, but we're going to be right here with you lifting you up. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day. God, uh, thank you for Brother Adam and Brother Billy Wayne and, and for my father, Pastor Keith, God, for the men of God that they are. And God, for the calling that you put on their lives to to not stand still, God, but to take your word to the farthest parts of the earth. God, thank you for that burden on them. And Lord, as they're getting ready to go in the next few hours, Lord, I pray that you will just ordain every step that they take. Lord, every person that they will come in contact with throughout this trip, God, I pray that you will just be with them, touch them, Lord. In this dark world that we live in, God, I pray that they will be the lighthouse for all to see. God, that they're love, your love will shine out in everything that they do. God, every person that they're going to be coming in contact with, you already know who that person is. And Lord, I pray that you will go ahead and be preparing their heart to hear
hear your word, to accept your word, God, and to make you the Lord of their life. God, as we learned a few weeks ago, there's they're the seed planters, God. They're going out and sowing. But God, you raise up the seeds. And so I pray that you will just bless the sowing of their seeds, God, that, that the reward will be great, God, that you will just place every seed in, in fertile ground, God, ready to hear you, hear about you, and trust you. God, I pray that you will be with the flocks. God, I pray that they will have smooth flocks. There will be no problems getting through the airports, God, through customs, everything all the way until they get here, God, I pray that you would just be with them. God, let them know that you're with them every step of the way. God, and I pray that you will be with us as a church, that you will daily, hourly put it on our hearts to lift them up to you. God, because we don't know the things that may be going on, but you do. And God, I pray that we will be standing in the gap on their behalf. Lord, we love you. We thank you, God. Thank you for what you're doing at this church. God, thank you for doing it. Thank you for what you're doing in each of these men's lives. And we ask all these things in your name.
Today is a great day. You know, when we think about all the things that we have seen God do, I, I said in one of the classes, maybe I was talking to Vic or someone, Tim Poole, some of them we was talking. You know, a lot of times people never see God at work and what God is doing. But church, if we can't see the things that God is blessing us with and the way that God's hand has been upon us, you know, I think about Sunday night as Adam stepped into the church and sat right over here on the side, and we got to watch him as uh, deacon ordination and thinking about all the prayers that have been lifted up to a holy and true God, and we get to see that God hears our prayers. To be able to see Steve this morning, you know, was in a, it was in an accident this, this week, and I won't say a whole lot about it, but he was in an accident this week, and very well could have lost his life. But because of God, God's hand. I mean, most people that you see that had the injuries that Steve had don't walk out of UAB the same night that all the things happened. But Steve did. Steve walked out. Why? Because God's hand. God's hand. I believe that with all my heart that the reason that we see these things is God is at work around us and he is doing things and God is protecting us. And guys, you know, when we look at, at, at all the things around us, God is at work, and he's doing great and mighty things around us. Let's don't miss what God's doing. You know, I think for too, too long now that we have missed what God is doing right in our presence, or we'll say, well, that's just by chance. I guarantee you if you ask Steve, was it by chance that he's walking today, I bet you he will give God credit for what is done. I bet you he don't believe it's by chance. Or if you talk to Adam about where he has been and the things that he has done, that he has seen work, it's not by chance. And you know what? It's not by chance that me and you sit here today to be able to come and to worship a one true God and to be able to serve him. It's not by chance that you're here. God brought you here, and I want you to be able to see that today. Um, a couple things before, uh, before I get started. Uh, February the 20th, we have uh, Daniel Wilson, who right now is in Alaska. I thought it was pretty neat. I called him yesterday to, on Friday. I called him just to make sure that everything was lined up for the 20th because I'll be coming back, and I wanted to make sure that he understood everything and that we had. He's in Alaska right now preaching the Word of God. And uh, it was pretty neat to be able to say he's in Alaska and we're fixing to leave and go to Tanzania and to be able to see the things that God is doing. But on the 20th, Daniel Wilson will be here. He will be doing our kickoff for evangelism. He will be our, our, our speaker to kick off evangelism. I am looking so forward to evangelism and to being able to go out. I know that's a daily walk, but there's just something about when our church comes together and we walk side by side each other in our community that God has put our church and to be able to tell people what God is doing. Oh, I love being able to do that, and you can be a part of that. Uh, in your Sunday school classes today, we, we promoted uh, evangelism. Please get with your Sunday school teachers as we start building the teams and putting the teams together for when we go out on evangelism. That's February the 20th, and we'll be going out the 21st. And also, on next week, on February the 7th, uh, 13th, we have the chili, chili luncheon. Um, Abby and Dalton are raising funds to be able to uh, go out to Tanzania this coming year in May. And by the way, if, if, if God is calling you over these next few weeks as we're talking about missions and different things going on, if God is tugging your heart, here's what I want to say. 
put your yes on the table and let God provide the rest of it. You go where God is calling you to go. And Dalton and Abby will be going to Tanzania. And so they're doing a, a chili cook-off. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to be all the way in Tanzania. And Daniel's already challenged me about my chili. And, and I won't even be here to be able to cook the chili to be able to do that. But here's what I want to tell you is please come and be a part. It's $10 to, uh, to enter your chili, and it's $5 a plate. Just come, stay, and fellowship, and eat as much chili and desserts and stuff that you want. Just be a part. You get to be a part in sending them on the mission field. And so when I think about all that, you see that God's church is, is really active right now, that things are happening. Um, I have got the opportunity all week this week to talk to missionaries and to be able to talk to people about this conference that's coming up in and, and, um, April the 27th, I mean 24th through the 27th, missionaries will be here at our church on the 23rd for us to cook and to be able to, to get them ready to be able to go out. That's on April 23rd. This conference is going to be one that is life-changing. I just want to challenge you, every night you will be able to come and to hear a pastor to be able to teach God's Word, and these are great pastors that's going to be speaking with us on Sunday. Bob Recker will kick it off on Monday. Vance Pittman will be here. Joel Sutherland will be on Tuesday, and on Wednesday we have Mac Brunson that will be here with us. These are great men of God who's all about kingdom work. I was talking to Jarman Leatherwood, and he was driving, and I was kidding him. He's going to be our morning speaker and I told Jarman, I said, Jarman, you got to get excited about this. He said, man, I can't get much more excited. I'm driving right now. And, 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 but when we look at these things and we think about all that's going on, God has gave us some wonderful men to come. During the daytimes, we're going to be doing breakout sessions. Come be a part. Come be a part. I want to get in our word, and I want us to give us a word this morning from God. Um, I love where we're at right now. I told you about when God started changing my heart for Greenbrier and when I fell in love with Greenbrier and the things that he is doing this morning, I want to pick back up and I want to talk about the words, love one another. I want to just talk about what does that really mean when we love one another. From John chapter 15, verse 12, if you would just stand, I'm going to read one verse and, and we're going to get started. Here's what the Word of God says in John chapter 15, verse 12. This is my commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. Listen to this one more time. This is my commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. Dear Father, I pray right now, Lord, that your word would speak to our hearts and that lives would be changed. Father, today, I want us to be able to see, Lord, that it's all about your love that you have for us and you flowing through us. So, Father, I ask right now that you would speak to our hearts. Holy Spirit, move in our lives. May we not leave here the way that we came in. May we leave closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. This morning, I want, to, I want us to think about when we stopped last week, we stopped at, because I have a relationship with God, I now have a relationship with God's family. Because I have a relationship with God, I now have a relationship with God's family. When we came into to become a believer in Christ, when we accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, He brought us into the family of God. You remember last week? We read that we were children of God. We also studied that we're adopted into God's family. When we gave our life to Him, we became part of a family. And last week we talked about how it is so important for me and you to, be, to have each one of us in our lives to grow that relationship, the importance of that. This morning, I want to I go back to where I finished. This verse that I just read says, This is a commandment that you love one another just as I love you. Now, I want to think about that word just just for a minute. I want to go back and I want to remind you of something. That word just means to love the same in the same way. 
When you see that word in the Greek, it means to love the way that Jesus loved. He says, this is my commandment, to love the way that I loved. To love in that way. Jesus teaches us that when we are right with him, we will love each other the same way that he loves us. Now, let me ask you a question. Are we loving each other the same way that Jesus loves us? You know, he talks about this in 1 John chapter, 1 John chapter 4, verse 20. Listen to what he says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 20. If someone says, I love God, we all would go and say, I love God. If, a, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. Now I want you to think about that verse, because that verse right there will hit us right between the eyes. Some of you are thinking right now, well, I don't hate them. I don't hate them. I just don't like them. I just don't want to be around them. We've all heard that before. I really don't have hate. That's a strong word, Keith. I don't hate them. I just don't want to be around them. I don't have nothing for them. I'm going to stay far away from them. Well, the word hate in the Greek, listen to the meaning of what the word hate means. Hate means an active ill will in words or conduct. It's when we have an, a, an active ill will or conduct towards another person. Or listen at this, an ill feeling that affects the way you act towards someone. The word hate. If we have these feelings and we act towards someone in a different way than we should, it's the same thing as hating that person. Listen to this. Here's putting it as simple as we can. If I have bitterness in my life, or if I have anger that's built up in me, or if I have resentment that's in my life, and I act like everything's okay. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I have this person, and I'm so built up, and I'm so ill with them, and I, I'm, I've just got all this anger built up. But when I'm around other people, I act like everything's okay. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Everyone has seen that. When this happens, you are lying to yourself and you're lying to the people who's around you and you're lying to God. Guys, it is important that we love one another. It's not, it says that if you have hatred in your heart, that, it, it, that you, you've not seen God. You've not seen God. How can you love God and not love one another? You can't be walking in harmony and fellowship with God and not be walking in harmony and fellowship with other believers. Man, I thought for sure y'all would give a big amen right there. Did you hear what I just said? There is no way that you can walk in harmony with God and not and, and not be in harmony with one another. There is no way to you to do it. If you, are, have you, if you have problems with a brother or a sister in the body of Christ, you have a problem. There is something that's standing in between y'all two. There is something standing between you and God also. I want you to think about that because here's the importance of it. When we look at our mission statement, it says to equip people to become a follower of Christ. We said that the strategy to get there is we're going to center on God and love others. How can we love others if we can't love each other right here in the, in the midst of God's family? You know you love your family. You do things with your family. It, it's everything. Everything that comes between you and a brother also stands between you and God. I want you to hear that. Let me give you an example. Matthew 5, 23 and 24 says this. Therefore... If you are presenting your offerings at the altar and, and there remember that your brother has something against you, it says to leave your offerings there before the altar and go first and be reconciled to your brother and then come and present your offerings. 
Why? Because when I'm right, when I bring when I bring my offerings, if I am not right before God, there is something in between us that I have got to get right before I bring it before the Father. Guys, if you will listen, if we can catch this today, here's the most important part of this. My relationship with God grows by the fellowship of God's family, us fellowshipping together. It grows. It makes us stronger. When you are fired up, I asked Mikey this week, I, 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 I kid around with Mikey a lot, and I told Mikey this week, I said, Mikey, are you fired up? I said, are you really fired up? You know, when a person's fired up, he can't wait to be around, around doing the things that God has happened. Mikey comes around and he said, Keith, are you fired up? And I said, if I get much more fired up, Mikey, I ain't going to be able to be, tank I won't be able to be handled. Because I tell you, what I want you to see is when we are excited, when we are in that relationship with God, our relationship with God grows by our relationship with our family and how we deal with each other. Is my relationship with God that enables me to fully enjoy my relationship with others. You know what? What I do on Monday to the time I come into this place is by the fellowship with God, it should drive me to want to be with you. Now listen, because of my alone time with God, in God's house, because I am alone and I have this relationship with God, and God is feeding me, and through that, it automatically drives me to want to be with you. Here's what scares me today. We understand that completely. But are we faithful to that as a church body? It scares me to know, I know there's people watching today, including my wife. I, I miss having Kim here and being able to look on the front. For y'all who are wondering where Kim is, Kim is uh, under the weather right now. She does not have COVID. Uh, she is COVID tested twice and there's no COVID there. Uh, I was COVID tested yesterday, so uh, to be able to travel, there's no COVID running around in our family right now. But I will tell you, Kim is up under the weather pretty bad. She's got the old cold and cough and the sore throat and all those things the doctor this morning give her some antibiotics to 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 get that i miss kim being here i i like she told me i could not i could not use her as examples today because she's not here to kind of give me the look but i i do want to tell you i do want to tell you that when you fall in love with your church family when you love God, and I've had a good week in God's Word, and God's Word is feeding me, and I'm digging into my Word, you know who I want to be around? You. Why? Because we need each other to grow. We need each other to grow. You know where you see this at? You see this in places like Sunday school. You see this in places like uh, our small groups on Wednesday nights. You see this when, when church is over on Sunday night. And you have brothers and sisters standing in the foyer out there, and it's an hour after church, and they're still fellowshipping together. You know why? Because they love one another. <laughs> Guys, when we fall in love with God, when we fall in love with God, here's what's going to happen. It's the first proof that your relationship is right with God. Because in order to be right with God, you will be right with God's family. Now, I want, I want to tell you this, and this is what scares me. And I've got people listening. This is what I was going to say a while ago. I've got people listening online, and I want to say this. We miss you. There is a lot of people that have got to the point, and they feel like that I can just stay at home and I can watch on a video. Let me say this. You are not feeling loved by God's family. We need you to grow. We need you to be a part here in God's house. I think it's time that we start speaking the truth about all of this that stay in home and stuff. Guys, we need each other. We're going to go through hard times. Here's, listen to this. This could be life-changing for us. There are things about God you will never learn apart from our relationship with other believers. 
Do you believe that? I believe that with all my heart. Let me just say it one more time. There are things about God you will never learn apart from your relationship with other believers. I have seen this. I got a small group that I'm a part of on Wednesday, on Wednesday nights. And we have four men that come in there and they're meeting together right now. And those four men are, are reading God's Word and looking at God's Word. Here's what I want to tell you what happened Wednesday night. Wednesday night I sit down with my group and we were looking into the Word. And Scott was sitting on this end and Anthony was on this side of me and Dennis was sitting straight across from me. And we started looking at God's Word and I started looking and here's what's happened. Just like my notes I have up here, they started opening their notebooks. Here's what God spoke to me this week. And they're reading to me what God has spoken in His Word. And you know what started happening? It started sharpening us. As a group, I learned things about Anthony. I told Anthony, I said, Anthony, you was ready to preach tonight, brother. You had the Word of God. He taught us things that, that I didn't even think about. Scott comes in. Here's what Scott said. I'm sitting, I, I have stopped my truck, and I am reading God's Word and reading the devotion, and I'm looking at this, and this is what God spoke to me. And he had wrote the things down in his, in his journal or in his notebook that he has, sharing what he has been seeing. You know what that's doing? That is sharpening everyone in that group. Psalms, uh, Proverbs 27, 17 says this. Iron sharpens iron. Y'all have heard me speak this many times. When I come together on Monday mornings, I meet with Brother Mike on Monday mornings. We get in there and we open the Word of God. Brother Mike tells me, if I have nothing to bring to this table, that's when I'm going to stop. He brings the Word of God and we open the Word of God. Why do we open the Word of God? Because He is sharpening me. There are guys that we meet together with that iron sharpens iron, that we come together. And it sharpens us. Guys, we need each other to grow. But if we can't stand to be around each other, how can we grow? There is a problem there. And let me just say, if there's a problem with coming to church and being faithful to church, there is an issue. Here's where your issue starts. It is your faithfulness with God. See, nobody has to tell me to come to church. I want to come to be a part. That's why I'm here at 4 o'clock in the morning. So on the 20th, I will be my next Sunday back. Everybody can be here in the parking lot at 4 o'clock and experience the sunrise that comes up at 5.30 out here. No, I'm just kidding. Here's what I want you to know. I look forward to being here with you. I look forward to being here and loving on you and being a part. That's what we see in the, in the, in the New Testament in the first church. Here's what he says. I want you to think about this. Fellowship is living out our relationship with God together with other believers. It's fellowship. How does this work? Mikey and them, I told him I was going to use his Sunday school class. We seen his Sunday school class wanting to do everything together. You know, they would meet, they would do holidays, they would be together. They did trips to Gatlinburg, they did it together. That togetherness, when you're together... And iron is sharpening iron, and people are loving each other. You know what happens? It just explodes. Nobody can explain why it's happening. It just happens. It just happens. It happens why? Because we desire fellowship with other people. We desire relationships with other people. Listen to what Acts 2.42 says. And they continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and breaking of bread and to prayer. They continued to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship. They were together, fellowshipping together, breaking bread and, and to prayer. The church, listen to what the church is. I want to give you a definition for the church. I know it's the people. We've been taught that, but listen at the church. A local community, you remember what I told you the community was? A community is a group of people who have followed Jesus and has been baptized and now you are in God's family. The church is a local community of baptized Jesus followers uniting together under biblical leadership to share in the mission of God. Here's what I want you to hear about that. We come together to be taught God's word. 
but it's so that we can go out and do the mission of God, what God has called us to do as individuals. Today, you've seen up here, and we got the flag up here today, we will get on a plane, not because we love to travel. God has a call on our lives for unreached people groups. We will get in a plane and we will fly for 24 hours to a place called Tanzania. We will travel another eight hours just driving to get to Tonga, Tanzania. When we get to Tonga, Tanzania, there's going to be 7,000 in this small village that has three sub-villages that not one believer is there that knows Jesus as Lord and Savior. Why is God calling us there? To bring hope. To those who do not know Jesus. We go to be able to share God's love. These people have a false hope that they're putting their faith in. And we get the opportunity to go and share the good news of Jesus with those people. Billy Wayne, 82 years old. 82, I hope you didn't mind me sharing this, Billy. 82 years old. Now, will I probably have to get a wheelchair to get him through the airport? No, I'm just kidding. He'll do that on his own. <laughs> but all kidding aside, Billy Wayne will go. Why at 82 years old does he still travel overseas to take the good news? He will be investing in God's men who's never had the opportunity to go to a school to be able to learn God's word. They mostly have learned by picking the word of God up and having another pastor feed into them. And they've learned on their own. And Billy Wayne gets a chance to go in and to give them God's word, the truth of God's word. That is being on mission with God. No matter where he calls you to, when you go into your work tomorrow, you're on mission with God. How do you know? He, he's put you there. Wherever he's put you there, he is there to bring hope to the, those people that does not know Jesus. Church, when we figure that out, and we figure out that if, if the local church is those believers, us coming in together and to fellowship, and then as we fellowship together, God calls us out to be on mission with him, and we get to go be a part of doing that. Do you know that our church, our church, through... The kids, through Randy, through all these things, I had to pack another bag this time. I'm always this guy that wants to have the smallest bag, and I pack the least amount of stuff, usually no snacks. It's usually three or four pairs of pants, you know, enough underwear to handle the week and socks to handle the week and everything else I can wash and clean out while I'm, at, while I'm in the hotel. But this time, because of this church and the love that the church has for the people, we have money to be able to go and buy God's word, to put into those hands of those people, to be able to hear God's word. I had children Wednesday night call me together and our children's director sitting and praying over me and asking God to bless the work that they have done. That is us being on mission with God and being obedient to what God has called us to do. Here at Greenbrier, we do this. We model this, and we model it in different ways. I want to give you some ways that we model this. We do this through Sunday school. We do this through Sunday school, which is a small group. They met together in homes. They went house to house meeting and, and serving. We do this through Sunday school. It's a discipleship of one-on-one -on -one when we come together with other believers, and we teach them the Word of God using the new life in Christ. Also using the call to joy. It's a discipleship, small groups where they meet together. We do this on Wednesday nights where we come together and we meet together. Youth, you will be doing this tonight. You will be doing exactly what the first church was called to do. When y'all meet together in small groups, learning God's word together and sharpening each other. You are doing the same things that in the book of Acts with the first church was done. When you start those small groups tonight. Guys, I love to know that I'm in a church that loves to fellowship in small groups and people love to invest in other people. I love that part. Not only do we meet in those, but we have accountability groups. We have different groups that are meeting together. The church itself is our large group meeting. We have two large group meetings. We have Sunday mornings and we have Sunday nights where we come together corporately as a group 
uh, the whole adults come together and they learn together. Our, t- our young people come together and they learn together in those small groups. They come to be a part. Listen to this. My relationship with God grows by fellowship with God's family. It grows through God's family. Why is that important? Why is this important? You will never know the best part. You will never know apart from fellowship with God. The world will never know God apart from his fellowship with each other that we have. His word apart from each other, the gospel will not spread the way that it should spread to do the things that God says to do. Listen to this, 1 John chapter 4, verse 12. I'm just going to turn there right quick because I know I'm going to have to read a little bit more than what I, I have put down. I want you to turn to that, 1 John chapter 4, and I want to start, I want to start right there. I'm going to start in verse 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us. Do you see that? And his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him. And he is in us because he has given us of his spirit. We have seen, the, we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confessed that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. Are you abiding today in him? The proof that the world may know God is the love that we have for one another. Did you hear that? It's the love of God. When we go into this place this week, There are some things that are a little tricky when we get in there. Here's what I want to tell you. The thing that's going to change that village that we're going into is God's love that abides in us, that flows out of us, that flows into them. They will be able to see the love of God through that. Please get the picture. Did you hear the word abide? The abide. It, it's where we're in the vine. We're connected to the vine. And when we're connected to the vine, the love that flows out of God flows through our branch, which produces love. It flows into other people. Guys, it's the love of God that changes everything. When we can love the way that Christ loved us, it changes everything that's about. We see this in the first church. We see it. It was their relationship with God that brought them into a relationship with each other. And it was their relationship with each other that was deepening their relationship with God. In the New Testament, I want you to think about this as we get ready to close. In the New Testament, I want you to think about this. Over 40 times, 40 times in the New Testament is the word one another was was spoken. I want you to listen to all the people that use this word. Jesus taught us how to love one another. John used it. Mark, Paul, Peter, and James all speaks of the word of one another. Listen to this. Be at peace with one another. Mark chapter 9. Give preference to one another in honor. Romans 12. Be kind to one another. Ephesians chapter 4. Build one another up. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Listen. Living out those one another statements, living them out as a family of God, does not come natural to me and you. It's not natural because we want to do things on our own. So you cannot do it. Why do we try? If it's not natural to us, why do we try to do it without God and his family? But that's what we do. We try to live out the things that we know. As I end, I want you to think about this. We need each other to walk in the ups and downs of life. We need each other so that we can walk through the ups and downs. Everyone's 
when you're excited, everybody wants to be a part. When we're celebrating something, everyone wants to be a part. But I promise you there's going to be a time, a moment, where there's going to be pain and sorrow. How many of you have ever made the statement, if you was a pastor, you would make this statement, what if, what if they had a church family? What difference would it have made in their life? What if, what if Steve, I'm just going to use Steve for a minute, or you could use Adam, whoever you wanted to use. But what if Steve didn't know that he had a church family that was called and was asked to pray and to lift him up before the Father and to know that that prayer that is going up, God's hearing his children lift up to the Father so that lives can be changed. His life can be changed. What if he didn't have a church family? What would it be? That means that you would be doing life all by yourself and nobody to be there for you. We need each other. We need each other. Listen to this. In, in, Acts, in Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 34, it says, And the congregation of those who believed were in one heart and soul, and not one of them claimed that anything belonging to him was his own, but all things were common property to them. And with great power the apostles were giving testimonies to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and abundant grace was upon them all. For there was not a needy person among them. For all who were, were owners of lands or houses would sell them to bring the proceeds, to the proceeds of the sale. Here is what that looks like. There was believers that were gathering together in large groups in the temple courts and from house to house, the small groups were meeting together. A need for some sort would arise in the community of believers. Listen to this now. A need would arise in the community of believers. There was a genuine sacrificial love, agape love, for each other that was expressed of Christ in them. It is God's desire that Christ in us would produce the same genuine sacrificial love. I want you to listen real closely. I want to ask you two questions as I end. Two questions that I believe is life-changing. Am I, am I meeting need within the body of Christ? Am I Greenbrier Road Baptist Church are we meeting the needs that's in the body of Christ? I want you to think about that. Are we meeting those needs? Are we, are we doing the things? As you evaluate your connection in the community, can you honestly say you are caring for other people in the family of God? Are we caring for each other? Here's how I know. When you go through hard times, is your church body, are they surrounding you? Are they there to lift you up? Listen to me, guys. There are going to be times that our church is, is, is brought in and, and we lift up and we take care of each other. When there's things that's going on in the body of Christ, we are there to love on our people and to be a part we, we send out texts and we do things like that. But listen, here's what makes you be a part of that. It's the love for each other. Guys, when we fall in love with each other and we know each other, when I know Dalton and I know the things that crank Dalton's tractor that makes him excited, that makes him go and do the things that he does, you know what? It makes me want to be a part of him. When I know Jason, and he's not just a name in our church, but he's someone that I have fell in love with, that I'm serving with in ministry, and now he's been a part of this. It makes me just want to be do more. When something goes on in his life, I want to be there to lift him up. Do you feel all alone? On the, on the video that's watching today, do you feel all alone? The reason that we feel all alone is because we've left God's family. We don't understand that God's family changes everything. 
the love that we have for each other changes the way that we act around each other and the way that we do church. That's what's different than the world. The world says, I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to be alone. I'll do whatever I want to do. God's way says, I'm going to love you in spite of because God loves me and I'm going to love you. And when I show that love, it will change the hearts of everybody. It's God's love. Second question. Am I using my gifts to serve the body of Christ? Am I using the gifts that serve the body of Christ? 1 Peter 4, 4 verses 8 through 10 says, Above all, keep fervent in the love for one another, because love covers a multitude of sin. Be hospitable, hospitable to, to one another without complaints. As each one has received the special gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards of God's manifold grace of God. Listen to this. The love that flows through me, the gifts that God's given me, is so that I can equip you and to lift you up in serving one another. God has given us spiritual gifts. Let me just say this. When we realize it's all about God and not about us, here's what changes. Ministry will not be hard to get people to be a part of. You know why? Because here's what happens. Our commitment level and our faithfulness, here's what happens. It goes above the roof that just wants to serve other people and to be a part of what they're doing. You know what? Children's ministry wouldn't have to have people rotating every three weeks or every two weeks. Why? Because the commitment of our body would understand, hey, I can give up a week to go serve, to lift someone up so that someone else can be fed the Word of God. You know what? Your youth wouldn't have to worry about small groups on Sunday night. Who's going to lead small groups or who's going to be our next leader of the men? Do you realize we're growing up and we need more leaders? You know what? It becomes no problem when you see the love of God flowing out of your life, not doing it out of guilt. I don't want you to do it out of guilt today. If your relationship with God, if the love with God is not there, don't come and serve. We want them to see the love of God flowing out of your life. My testimony that I am in the right relationship with God is I want to serve God's family. And you can see that, and it, you can see it by the fruit that it bears. Guys, today, today, this sermon is not to get anyone down. Here's what it's to say. Jason, I need you. Mikey, I need you. Dalton, I need you. In ministry, I need my brothers and sisters to be able to grow and to be strong and to be used the way that God intended us to be used. But it only happens when we fall in love with the Father. And when we fall in love with the Father, He changes everything. First John 4, 7 and 8, my daddy made me remember this. That's why I keep quoting it so much to you. Here's what it says. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. See, the love that we have that flows through our lives can change the way that we look inside the church. It can change the way that we look when we're walking in our jobs. It can change when I step in that village in Tanzania. I don't have to walk in fear because why? I've got the love of Jesus flowing through my life and I'm doing what God has called me to do and God will bless it. Guys, when we get on mission with God and we surrender and completely sell out to a love relationship with God, your life will be changed forever let's all stand today if you don't have a relationship with Jesus maybe this calling for a relationship you don't understand exactly what I'm talking about maybe that's because the spirit inside of you is not testifying that you're a child of God the word of God says that if I'm a child of God the spirit of God is going to testify with me to let me know that I am a child today maybe you don't know him or maybe today you just lost that fire a little bit, but today you see that it's all because of your love relationship with the Father. It's nothing else. Guys, it's not about what you do. It's who you're with. And when I'm with the Father, all this doing things will come to a place to where I serve, not out of obligation, 
but I'm serving because I'm serving the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And my life has changed to do that. Today, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or maybe you don't have a church home, today is the day you can make this place your home. We would love to have you as we serve the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Let me pray. Our dear Father, I ask right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would move. And Lord, if there's one here that does not know you, I pray that today they may surrender their life and make you Lord of their life. Father, we place this church in your hands, Father. Whatever your will is, may it be done today. In Jesus' name, amen. Standing at a distance in the shadow of your shame, but there's a light of hope that's shining. Won't you come and take your can see the weight you carry, the fears that hold your heart, and through the cross you've been forgiven, you're accepted as you
Guys, I want to say this as we close our invitation. The invitation is never closed. Maybe God is dealing with your life and you have questions that you want to ask. I want to tell you that we love you. We thank you for being here. We thank you for being a part of this church. But guys, I feel like that God has way more for us as a church body than just to sit inside these walls. I feel like God has a call on our life, so we, we teach the Word of God very strongly that you got to love and let God flow from you because without God, with man, it's impossible. With God, all things are possible. And I believe that with all my heart. I want to tell you today that I love you. I love you, and here's what I want to tell you. If God has spoken to your heart, somewhere in the Word today, God spoke to your heart, here's what I want to ask you to do this week. Apply it. To your life. Whatever he's telling you, you go and you ask God to show you and let him speak to your heart and show God's love to you. I'm going to ask at this time if our if our ushers will come for the morning offering. I want to thank you again. Uh, we will be leaving as they come up. I just want to say we will be leaving today. Please be in prayer for us. We will be in Tonga, Tanzania. If you want to look it up, uh, we will be there. Uh, serving please lift us up in prayers this week as you think about the things that's going on pray for us as we go forward Father we thank you for uh, just let us come to your house today and worship God I thank you worship we have our tithes and our offerings to uh, take what we give out of obedience and bless it and use it to further your kingdom and God we love you we thank you in your name we pray amen your place there's no one that's turned away all you cities all you saints so come right in find your place so come on in take your place there's no one who's turned away all you cities all you saints come right in find your grace Bring it all to the table. It's nothing he ain't seen before. For all your sin, all your sorrow, all your sadness, there's a Savior and he calls. Bring it all to the table. I'm going to ask if y'all all will stand. I've got my good friend Adam Montgomery, he's a pastor at Reno Baptist Church, and I'm going to ask if he will, if he will dismiss us in prayer.